host microbial interaction this is the second lecture following introduction of the medical microbiology i think up to now we have discussed about the uh, disease causation chain of infection as well as some bit about the gram stain as well as microscopy i think due to this prevalent condition uh, even with the link those things are provided but this is the proper lecture series we'll proceed with this following binding there is term called colonization so adherence now it is on the surface of our tissues or cells now it required multiplication and maintenance of the population as well as i said early with the colonization with the multiplication they can compete with the normal flora and resist our body innate immune response so mechanisms like bile stomach acid hcl you know it is range is 1.5 to 4.5 like ph against peristalsis skin secretions iga antibodies and with the iron so these are the virulence or disease causing mechanisms depending on these factors how they all come for that there are different mechanisms different chemical mediators secreted and contained in their cell wall based on these those are term one way we can say virulent factors like toxins pili adhesins enzymes so using those it initiate infection here can see that's a pictorial presentation very well those pili adherence is there then the bacterium is propelling and attach on these microvillas and there are some secretion secretory systems with the presence of that and it attached to our enterocyte so we'll say enterocyte and start secreting the uh, toxins and their more other chemical mediators there are a few mechanisms separate mode of invasion i just put here just get the idea it's a tight ligand receptor interaction direct uptake one at a time uptake this is term roughly method so there are at once there are several it's another way m cell invasion so they are in our immune cells they are in our gastrointestinal tract enterocytes with there so those uh, microbes go via m cells and enter to our body so now so now you know how the organisms enter and it should adhere and it should colonize and further enter to our body tissues to cause a disease this is its impact manifestation no? one may outcome of our inflammatory response it could be either take uh, toxin mediated or as well as could be following mainly due to invasion leading to immune or inflammatory reaction so here mainly in our body there is a defense that means protection from invading pathogens so bacteria by the time in addition to this colonization virulence factors is a part of virulency bacteria can bacteria may have adapted to overcome these barriers so it is term evasion so there are a few so when you learn about the immune system you may learn much but for the sake of completion of this lecture i have put here so please go 
but don't worry we discuss later about that Apart from complement evasion, pagolisomal fusion, uh, here one important thing that is avoidant antibodies. They produce IgA proteases. IgA is the antibody which present in our mucous membrane. So Neisseria gonorrhea which causes uh, multiple diseases, non, uh, mainly gonococcal urethritis. So it is initially adhere in human urethra. So it's a mucous membrane, so IgA is there. Uh, it produces IgA proteases which cleave IgA. So now specific protection is, that means it's in vain. Likewise, there are antigen variations and mimicking the host. There are a lot of host, that is antigen, ev sorry, evasion mechanisms are there. This is the disease causation. Now almost it is established. So disease causation, as I said earlier, it could be toxin mediated as well as due to immune reaction. Toxin also at last body produce immune reaction. So damage is driven by some may produce exotoxins. That means they produce toxin and excrete to from excrete from the cytosol via cell membrane cell wall to outside so for that that particular bacteria should colonize one example is cholera so you know the mode of transmission that is weak oral so those organisms reach to our colon small intestine to colon so while on passage they adhere to enterocytes and there is a colonization that is replication they are within the incubation period and once established they start to produce toxins those toxins you know cholera toxin toxin a and b subunits so it is now going to prepare and by that particular colonized microbes and cause disease but the other way, there are preformed toxins. That's another way. So that means microbes do not need to colonize. So even in the spoiled food, if we take some food material contain, containing those toxins, they straight away cause disease. So it is short incubation period. Is there? I mean, not incubation period. It perhaps short time lag. To develop the disease. There are other toxins, membrane damaging toxin, causes hemolysin, caused by streptolysin O, and phospholipases, these are enzymes, cleaves lipids in membranes. 
so phospholipase are in our cell membrane so with the presence of clostridium perfringens or other microbes which produce lipophospholipases they go and act on our phospholipids and leads to cell lysis this is another entity super antigens so they differ from conventional toxins they are much more virulent and within a short time frame they cause us disease toxic dose is also less as well as compared to other here they hyper stimulate our immune system normally toxins stimulate our immune system but in this case it is kind of cellular strom like so usually in the toxins they can stimulate only few lymphocytes or immune cells but here with the presence of this toxin or super antigen they stimulate vast array or we'll say large number of toxin cell cells at once then they manifest as fever nausea diarrhea vomiting likewise they lead to shock other antigens or toxins also leads to shock but here it's a super antigen as i said earlier uh, so you have to know about the mechanisms when you learn about antigens and antibodies in the immune system we learn much other type of toxin is endotoxin i said earlier exotoxin that is secreted by particular microbes to outside endotoxin is they are not secreted perhaps it's part of their cell wall or cell membrane so lipopolysaccharides lipid a pia colic acid so they are part of uh, gram positive cell wall lipopolysaccharides are there and they cause they are toxic to us and they cause disease different microbes cause different diseases by different means that is by means of inflammation neisseria meningitis which cause bacterial meningitis by means of mainly inflammation some may antigen antibody complexes so the antigens are bacterial products antibodies produced by human body and there is a uh, binding antibody antigen complex so they go and settle in our kidneys or joints which cause glomerular nephritis likewise and there are cross reactive antibodies we'll say autoimmunity they provoke that is actually mole molecular mimicry so it's again bit of immunology but fascinating thing is bacterial uh, antigens so they are virulence factors so other way bacterial cellular components molecular wise similar to our body composition or body uh, structural materials one example is uh streptococcus they are it is similar to our joints so with the presence of those antigens our body produce antibodies but ultimately body things and produce antibodies go and act on on our cells so body's cells and cause lysis so destruction provoke inflammation and cause disease so it is termed as autoimmunity so acute rheumatic fever following streptococcus sore throat so one of a known example there are a few more here you can see antibody antigen complex so finally this is a final slide so i think you have a fair idea about the post microbial interaction how they cause disease thank you